You know, Hannah, you really should learn to take a compliment. This town is cascading. I should give you some money for these clothes. He glares at me, as if I have offended him. On some level, I hurry on. You've already given me the books, which of course I can't accept, but these clothes. Please let me pay you back. I smile tentatively at him. Anastasia, trust me, I can afford it. That's not the point. Why should you buy these for me? Because I can. His eyes flash with a widened gleam. Just because you can doesn't mean that you should, I reply quietly, as he arches an eyebrow at me. His eyes twinkling and suddenly I feel that we are talking about something else, but I don't know what it is, which remains, reminds me. Why did you send me the books, Christian? My voice is soft. He puts down his cutlery and regards me intently, my eyes burning with some unfathomable emotion. Holy crap, my mouth dries. Well, when you were nearly run over by the cyclists and I was holding you, and you were looking up at me. Oh, kiss me, kiss me, Christian. He pauses and shrugs. I felt I owed you an apology and a warning. He runs his hand through his hair. Anastasia, I'm not a hearts and flows kind of man. I don't do romance. My tastes are very singular. You should steer clear of me. He closes his eyes as if in defeat. There's something about me, and I'm finding it impossible to stay away, but I think you've figured that out already. My appetite vanishes, he can't stay away. Then don't, I whisper. He gasps, his eyes wide. You don't know what you're saying, enlighten me then. We sit gazing at each other, neither of us touching our food. You're not celibate then, I breathe. Amusement lights up his eyes. No, Anastasia, I'm not celibate. He pauses for this information to sink in. And I flush scarlet. The mouth to brain filter is broken again. I can't believe I've just said that out loud. What are your plans for the next few days, he asks, his voice low. I'm working today from midday. What time is it? I panic suddenly. It's just after ten. You've plenty of time. What about tomorrow? He has his eyebrows on the table. And his chin is resting on his long, steeple fingers. Kate and I are going to start packing. We're moving to Seattle next weekend. And I'm working at Clayton's all this week. You have a place in Seattle already? Yes. Where? I can't remember the address. It's in the Pipe Market district, not far from me, he smiles. So what are you going to do for work in Seattle? Where is he going with all of these questions? The Christian Grey Inquisition is almost as irritating as the Catherine Kavanaugh Inquisition. I've applied for some internships I'm waiting to hear. Have you applied to my company? As I suggested. I flush, of course not. And what's wrong with my company? Your company or your company, I smirk. Are you smirking at me, Miss Dill? He tilts his head to one side. And I think he looks amused, but it's hard to tell. I flush and glance down at my unfinished breakfast. I can't look him in the eye when he uses that tone of voice. I'd like to bite that lip, he whispers darkly. I gasp, completely unaware that I am chewing my bottom lip and my mouth pops open. That has to be the sexiest thing anybody has ever said. My heartbeat spikes and I think I am panting. Jeez, I'm a quivering mess and he hasn't even touched me. I squirm in my seat and meet his dark glaze. Why don't you? I challenge quietly. Because I'm not going to touch you, Anastasia. Not until I have your written consent. He slips into a smile. What? What does that mean? Exactly what I say. 
He sighs and shakes his head at me, amused but exasperated. I need to show you, Anastasia. What time do you finish work this evening? About eight. Well, we could go to Seattle this evening, or next Saturday for dinner at my place, and I'll acquaint you with the facts. The choice is yours. Why can't you tell me now? Because I'm enjoying the breakfast and your company. Once you're enlightened, you probably don't want to see me again. What does that mean? Does he white slave small children to some godforsaken part of the planet? It's the part of some underworld crime syndicate. It would explain why he's so rich. Is he deeply religious? Is he impotent? Surely not. He could prove that to me right now. I flushed Scarlet thinking about the possibilities. This is getting me nowhere. I'd like to solve the riddle. That is Christian Grey sooner rather than later. If it means that whatever secret he has that I don't want to know him anymore, then quite frankly, it will be a relief. Don't lie to yourself, my subconscious yells at me. It'll have to be with pretty damn bad to have you running for the hills. Tonight, he raises his eyebrow. Like Eve, you're so quick to eat from the tree of knowledge, he smokes. Are you smoking at me, Mr. Grey? I ask sweetly. Pompous even. He narrows, narrows his eyes at me and picks up his blackberry. He presses one number. Taylor, I'm going to need Charlie Tanks. Charlie Tango? Who's he? From Portland. At, say, 2030. No standby at Escala. All night. All night? Yes, on call tomorrow morning. Our pilot from Portland to Seattle. Pilot? Standby pilot from 2230. He puts the phone down. No, please, or thank you. Do people always do what, that, what he tells them? Usually, if they want to keep their job, he says, dead pump. And if they don't work for you, oh, I can be very persuasive, Anastasia. You should finish your breakfast, and then I'll drop you off at home. I'll pick you up at Clayton's at eight when you finish. We'll fly up to Seattle. I blink at him rapidly. Fly? Yes, I have a helicopter. I gape at him. I have my second date with Christian, also on Mysterious Grey. From coffee to helicopter rides. Wow. We'll go by helicopter to Seattle. Yes, why? He grins wickedly. Because I can. Finish your breakfast. How can I eat now? I'm going to Seattle by helicopter with Christian Grey. And he wants to bite my lip. I squirm at the fork. Eat, he says more sharply. Anastasia, I have an issue with wasted food. Eat. I can't eat all this. I go for what's left on the table. Eat what's on your plate. If you'd eaten properly yesterday, you wouldn't be here. And I wouldn't be declaring my hand so soon. His mouth sets in a grim line. He looks angry. I frown and return to my now cold food. I'm too excited to eat. Christian, don't you understand? My subconscious explains. But I'm too much of a coward to voice these thoughts alone, especially when he looks so sullen, mm, like a small boy. I find the thought amusing. What's so funny, he asks. I shake my head, not daring tell him, and keep my eyes on my food. Swallowing my last piece of pancake, I pick up at him. He's eyeing me spectrally. Good girl, he's saying. I'll take you on when you've dried your hair. I don't want you getting ill. There's some kind of unspoken promise in his words. What does he mean? I leave the table, wondering for a moment if I should ask permission, but dismissing the idea. Sounds like a dangerous... Proceeding to set, I head back to his bedroom. A thought stops me. Where did you sleep last night? I turn to gaze at him, 
still sitting in the dining room chair. I can't see any blankets or sheets out, out here. Perhaps he's had them tidied away. In my bed, he says simply. He's gazing passive again. Oh. Yes, it was quite a novelty for me too, he smiles. Not having sex. There, I said the word. I blush, of course. No, he shakes his head and frowns as if we're keeling something uncomfortable. Sleeping with someone. He picks up his newspaper and continues to read. What in heaven's name does that mean? He's never slept with anyone. He's a virgin. Somehow I doubt that. I stand staring at him in disbelief. He's the most mystifying person I've ever met. And it dawns on me that I have slept with Christian Grey and I kick myself. What would I have given to be conscious to watch him sleep? See him vulnerable. Somehow I find that hard to imagine. Well, allegedly all will be revealed tonight. In his bedroom, I hunt through the chest of drawers and find the air dryer using my fingers. I dry my hair the best I can. When I finished, I head into the bathroom. I want to brush my teeth. I eye Christian's toothbrush. It would be like having him in my mouth. Mm. Glancing guiltily over the shoulder at the door. I feel the bristles on the toothbrush. They are damp. He must have used it already. Grabbing it quickly, I squirt toothpaste on it and brush my teeth in double time. I feel so naughty. It's such a thrill. Grabbing my t-shirt, bra and panties from yesterday, I put them in the shopping bag that Taylor bought and head back to the living area to hunt for my bag and jacket. Deep joy, there is the hair tie in my bag. Christian is watching me as I tie my hair back. His expression unreadable. I feel his eyes follow me as I sit down and wait for him to finish. He's on his blackberry talking to someone. They want to. How much will that cost? Okay, and what safety measures do we have in place? And they'll go via Suez. How safe is Ben Sullivan? <coughs> and when do they arrive in Dorfall? <coughs> okay, let's do it. Keep me abreast of progress. He hangs up, ready to go. I nod. I wonder what his conversation is about. He slips on a navy pink pinstripe jacket. Picks up his car keys and heads for the door. After you, Miss Phil. He murmurs opening the door for me. He looks casually elegant. I pause, frantically too long, drinking in the sight of him. And to think I slept with him last night. And after all the te tequila and the throwing up, he's still here. What's more, he wants to take me to Seattle. Why me? I don't understand it. I head out the door, recalling his words. There's something about you. Well, the feeling is entirely mutual, Mr. Gray, and I am to find out what his secret is. We walk in silence down the corridor toward the elevator. As we wait, I peek up at him through my lashes, and he looks out of the corner of his eye down at me. I smile, and his lips twitch. The elevator arrives and we step in. We're alone. Suddenly, for some inexplainable reason, Possibly our proximity. In such an enclosed space, the atmosphere between us changes. Charged with the electric, exhilarating anticipation. My breathing alters. As my heart races. His head turns frantically towards me. His eyes dark as slate. I bite my lip. Oh, fuck the paperwork here, girls. He lunges at me pushing me against the wall of the elevator. Before I know it, he's got both of my hands in one of his grip above my head and he's pinning me up the wall using my hips. Holy shit, his other hand grabs my hair and yanks down, bringing my face up and his lips are on mine. It's only not just painful, I moan into his mouth, giving his tongue an opening. He takes full advantage his tongue expertly exploring my mouth. I have never been kissed like this. My tongue tentatively strokes his and joins his 
in his slow erotic dance. That's all about touch and sensation. All bump and groan. He brings his hand up to grasp my chin and holds me in place. I'm helpless. My hands pinned my face held and his hips restraining me. His erection is against my belly. Oh my. He wants me. Christian Grey. Greek God wants me. And I want him here. Now in the elevator. You are so sweet. He murmurs. Each word. The elevator stops. The doors open. And he pushes away from me. In the blink of an eye. Leaving me hanging. Three men in business suits. Look at both of us and smirk. As they climb on board. My heart rate is through the roof. I feel like I've run an uphill race. I want to lean over and grasp my knees, but that's just too obvious. I glance up at him. He looks so cool and calm, like he's been doing the Seattle Times crossword. How unfair. Is he totally unaffected by my presence? He glances at me out of the corner of his eyes, and he gently blows on a deep breath. Oh, he's affected, all right. And my very small inner goddess sways in a gentle Victorian samba. The businessman exits on the second floor. We have one more floor to travel. You've brushed your teeth, he says, staring at me. I used your toothbrush. His lips quirk up in a half smile. Oh, Anastasia, still. What am I going to do with you? The doors open at the first floor and he takes my hand and pulls me out. What is it about elevators, he mutters, more to himself than to me, as he strides across the lobby. I struggle to keep up with him, because my wits have been thoroughly and royally scattered all over the floor and walls of the elevator. Free in evening, I'll tell.